When I first got into off-roading, well, I didn't even have a winch, but when I did finally purchase my first winch and had to use it, I really had no idea what I was doing. Other than engaging and disengaging the clutch and hooking up my remote, I was kind of clueless. So in today's video, that's exactly what we're gonna go through with you guys. We're just gonna show you some basic necessities of what you may wanna have with you or what you should have with you prior to winching or when you buy your winch. Another thing is too, is we're gonna also show you some do's and don'ts while winching. It's gonna be more of a basic video for anybody that either has never winched before, maybe you just got your first winch or maybe you just forgot how to winch. So with that said, let's go ahead, let's get started. So with having a successful winching experience, there is a few things that you're gonna to wanna to have with you out on the trails. These kind of things you wanna keep with you, obviously in the vehicle, but somewhere where they're more easily accessible in case of a situation where you do get stuck or somebody else gets stuck, uh, they're gonna be easily uh, reachable, so that way you can just grab them and go and have a successful extraction. So one of the first things, and it may seem like a small thing, but your winch isn't gonna work without it, and that is your winch remote. This is something you should always keep in the vehicle. If for any reason you do have to take it out of the vehicle, maybe you just have to clean it, whatever the case may be, make sure and put it back in the vehicle and in a spot where you know it's gonna be. I don't know how many times out on the trails, either myself or friends, spent more time than what should have been spent looking for the winch remote. And most times everybody has theirs, but it does happen, you do forget it, just try not to. Next thing you wanna have with you is a good pair of leather gloves. Leather gloves are especially important to help, well, not only protect your hands from getting you know, caught in something, but if you do have metal winch cable to help protect your hands from sharp debris or, or sharp metal that may be coming off that winch cable. So another thing you wanna have with you is some shackles. Now I particularly like the soft shackles. I've recently only been using these last few years and they're so much lighter. They're easier to carry along with you. Uh, they're a lot less dangerous in case one of them does break. So like these particular ones here are from Voodoo Off-Road, but the soft winch shackles are really nice to have. I do really like these. Now, if you are in a situation where maybe you do need to have a metal D-ring shackle, always make sure it's the screw pin type. A lot less chances of that pin coming out on you if it's actually screwed all the way in. Now, we'll get into it further into the video, but one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to use these when you're winching off of a tree saver, like what's right here. So a tree saver just goes around the tree, it's self-explanatory. It actually protects the tree from any damage from either your winch cable or not so much synthetic cable or synthetic rope, but it does also help prevent, like you don't wanna wrap your synthetic rope around a tree because it could cause damage to that synthetic rope. So just best to use a tree saver that's rated for the maximum capacity that you're gonna be uh, winching off of. I think this one's here is rated up to 35,000 pounds, so plenty. But what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna hook a D-ring shackle, a metal D-ring shackle, in between your tree saver or your anchor point and your winch hook. You don't need an extra piece of metal come flying around or flying at you in case that winch cable does break. So with that, you can either use a soft shackle or just hook the hook directly right to your tree saver. And then here we have our snatch block. It's basically a winch pulley block. What this does is it allows you to anchor maybe off to the side a little bit, but it does also help double or maximize your pulling capacity from your winch because it'll basically double your winching pulling power. So, and we're gonna get more into uh, different techniques with using snatch blocks or even using a couple of different snatch blocks in another video that we'll be doing later on. So uh, we'll show you different winching techniques in that video, but today we're just gonna go through some of the basic necessities and do's and don'ts of winching. So another thing that I always like to carry with me, um, I do have a kinetic energy rope in my vehicle, but I do also carry a static strap. This one isn't gonna stretch. This is, if I need to anchor down to another vehicle, I can use the static strap, or even if I need to extend the amount of pull that I need to do while I'm winching, I can also use the static strap for that too. Then the last thing, well, I mean, if it's cold out, a good winter jacket, which is why we're in here today, because it's freezing out. So as much as we wanted to show this video outside, we're gonna choose to stay warm. But what this is actually uh, here for is because this can be used as a winch line weight, or basically like a, a winch blanket, winch line blanket, or cable blanket, it may be called. So in case of 
the winch line itself breaking. What a heavy weight does, you would just drape this over the top of the winch line while you're winching. And just in case the winch line does break, it's gonna weight down that cable. If the hook comes flying at you, it'll run into this weight. Uh, most people have like either a winch blanket or some kind of heavy object that you can drape over that winch line. I've also seen logs used in the past if nothing else was available, but something that will draw that winch line down towards the ground uh, in case of you know something breaking or the winch line breaking. And guys, I know there's a lot of different stuff that you can bring with you, but these are the basic necessities that I carry with me. So um, just wanted to show you that. And then from here, we'll go ahead and show you how to use the winch. One of the things that I always like to do is when hooking up your winch cable, hooking up your winch remote um, is to get the line unraveled, first of all, because you could be in sort of a high stress situation where you're stuck, somebody's stuck, you're trying to extract them out or extract yourself out and it feels like you're in a hurry and the anxiety is high and I don't know, maybe there's people waiting behind you, things like that. So just make sure and take your time, get your gloves on, do it properly, make sure there's nobody in what I like to call the danger zone. This would be if the winch line did snap, is there anybody gonna be within whatever the, the radius is, 50 feet, 100 feet, whatever, how much winch line you have pulled out. So make sure everybody's out of the way and you take your time and just relax while doing it so you don't forget something or you don't hurt yourself. Another thing is too, before I even jumped out of the vehicle, I make sure that I set the parking brake so that the vehicle doesn't have a potential of moving anywhere because I might not be stuck, I may be just using my vehicle as a winching vehicle to extract somebody else out in the mud or whatever the case may be. So make sure your vehicle is in park, the emergency brake is set and that it's not gonna roll anywhere. So from there, it's just a matter of also making sure that your winch remote cable is gonna be out of the way because once you hook up your remote cable to your, your solenoid here, you're gonna pull your winch line out. You don't wanna get your cable wrapped all around the winch line. Let's make sure we have a good solid connection here, which it is, okay? And then from there, the driver should always be the one in control of the winch remote as well. And that keeps anybody else from being really close next to the winch, just in case one of the winch lines snaps or anything like that. So I always like to run the cable out and try to keep it out of the way of anything that might potentially happen, which normally we just, run it through the window like that and then you have control over it. But for this purpose, I'm just gonna stand here so I can show you guys the proper winch operating controls like your clutch mechanism here, which I'm gonna go ahead and disengage it. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of pressure on this line. Sometimes if there is, if the last time the winch line was spooled in, there might've been too much tension put on that line and you may not be able to disengage that clutch right away, but this was pretty easy, so disengage the clutch. Another thing too, real quick, is make sure the engine's running, um, especially before you're about to winch because your winch does operate off of a certain amount of amperage and you want your alternator to be feeding the battery, feeding that amperage instead of the winch just running specifically or solely off your battery. A uh, Couple things could happen there. One I've had happen, I actually melted the battery terminals off of my battery uh, this was years ago, literally melted the terminals right off the battery. Um, so you don't want that to happen, obviously. And another thing is too, is you don't wanna, you don't wanna create any extra heat if you don't have to with the winch. So you really just don't know how much power the winch is gonna need, uh, depending on how much it has to work, either extracting yourself out or pulling somebody else out. So leave the engine running, let the alternator feed the power to the battery while the winch feeds off the battery. Now in this particular situation, there is not an external disconnect switch real close by, which um, I think we should do another video on because I think it's important to show why you would want a power disconnect going to your winch somewhere that's readily available because you wanna be able to turn that power off should your hand potentially get stuck in the fair lead here or if the winch cable gets stuck on and you can't stop the winch from spooling in, you should be able to have a switch relatively nearby to be able to turn off right away. So um, maybe we'll save that for another video. I think that would be a good thing to show you guys. But for now, obviously we don't have it. But anyways, either way, regardless, the winch is directly hooked up right to the battery right now. So 
to get it started, to pull your winch line out. Right now it is disengaged, so you just pull it out. It's pretty simple, obviously. When you get enough winch cable pulled out and you're ready to hook up to whatever it is that you're hooking up to, if it's another vehicle or um, if it's a tree saver and you're hooking up to a tree saver, the one thing you don't want to do is um, two things, actually. Well, a couple of things. I'll get through them. One of them is you don't want to go way off to an angle if you don't have to. You want to try to winch as straight as possible. It'll not only help the winch line spool up on the winch drum, but it'll also prevent any sort of tearing into the synthetic cable if you're on too far of an angle. Um, if that winch cable breaks, it could snap around and who knows, it could whiplash somebody that may be standing by. Whereas if you're on a straight line pole, you're going to have the best chances of having the most safest pull. So this is a Rough Country 12,000 pound winch, which actually came right off of our website, but um, this does have the sheath on it. Now this sheath is great with synthetic cable or synthetic rope if you're trying to winch over any sort of jagged rocks or maybe jagged obstacles out on the trail, you can use the sheath to, uh, to help protect the winch cable. That's basically what it's for. And then another thing too is it's important to know is even though, like I was saying earlier in the video, even though we have these hard metal D-ring shackles, we want to not use them if we don't have to. So a soft shackle, or if we're hooked up around a tree, a couple things with this is we can hook, we can hook the hook. We can hook the hook right to the, the um, open-ended part of the tree saver here, just like that. And now when doing this, obviously for demonstration purposes, and we're inside today because it's cold as hell outside, but anyways, you want to have your hook facing up just like this. You don't want to hook it on this way. Reason being is because if this hook, if this J hook happens to break right here, and with all of that tension on there, it's going to go flying upwards if it's in this position. However, if you have it in this position and this J hook here breaks uh, right here, it's actually going to send it downwards. But remember that we have, we're going to have our weighted blanket on here. So in case that does happen, uh, the weighted blanket is going to catch this hook and keep it down and send it down to, to the ground. So um, that's definitely how you want to hook up your tree saver or uh, whatever it is that you're hooking up to. If you're hooking up to another uh, vehicle, make sure your hook, the open end part of your hook is facing up. So now we know to hook the hook with the open end facing upwards. but. What we also want to do is find ourselves, if, especially if it's a self extraction, uh, we, we're going to want to find ourselves the best anchor point as possible. This is a nice, huge, solid live tree. If we're out in the woods, if not, there's a couple different other tactics that we can do, which we'll cover in that, that more advanced winching techniques video with things like digging a hole. I don't know if we're going to dig a hole, but things like digging a hole and putting an anchor in the hole and winching from that. If you're in a wide open area where there's no trees or no other anchor points or anything like that. So, but for this video, we'll say we'll want to find a nice healthy tree that isn't going to break on us. It's, you know, it's going to be a solid winching point, no matter how much weight we put on it, because depending on how severe your stock uh, could, or how severe your buddy stock, there could be a max pulling potential situation here. And that's where it becomes really the most dangerous. So find a super solid uh, winching point and anchor point uh, by finding a live tree or something that you can hook onto that isn't going to go anywhere. The other thing is too, is when you are looking for that solid winching point is to try and run as much of your winch cable out as possible. Reason being is because your winch has the most power with almost all of the winch cable or synthetic rope pulled off of the drum. Now you don't want to ever pull all of the winch cable or synthetic rope off of the winch spool. You always want to leave if it's cable, if it's a metal cable, you always want to leave at least five wraps around the drum. So you don't want to ever pull out any more 
than five wraps. And if it's synthetic cable or synthetic rope, then you wanna leave at least a full spool of wound up uh, synthetic cable or synthetic rope on that drum. And that'll give it enough tension and enough bite on that drum itself to be able to stay on there and not get pulled all the way off of it. So what that means is the more that your winch is spooling in, the less amount of power that it's actually gonna have. So we found our anchor point. We got a nice solid anchor point. We got as much cable out as possible or rope out as possible so that we're at max pulling capacity with the winch. Another thing we wanna make sure of is that when we're winching in, one, like I said before, there's nobody else within that danger zone of you know, getting hit with the winch rope if it does break. But the other thing is too, is make sure that the winch line that the synthetic line or cable is spooling in on that drum properly and it's not getting all bound up because and this is probably more important with uh, cable is if that cable starts getting all bound up on the winch drum it's actually going to cause uh, damage to the winch cable and it might end up being junk by the time you're done with it so i know it's kind of hard to do if you're sitting in your driver's seat and this is another proper thing to remember is you're, if you're sitting in your driver's seat and you're spooling in, you're winching somebody out, you're self-extracting, whatever the case may be, you want to make sure that emergency brake is set like we talked about, but, and the engine running, but we also want to make sure the transmission's in neutral and our foot is on the brake. Because once you start putting all that heavy power on that winch line, on your vehicle, the last thing that you want to happen is putting all of that weight on the parking pin if your vehicle is in park with an automatic transmission. Obviously manual transmission, have it in neutral, foot on the brake, parking brake set, and that'll give you the best opportunity to not break anything and keep your vehicle positioned in that one spot. If your vehicle starts getting pulled, if you're extracting somebody else out, obviously if you're pulling yourself out and your vehicle starts moving, that's a good thing. But if you're pulling somebody else out and your vehicle starts sliding, you may need to hook up an anchor point. And that's where like one of those D-ring shackles that I showed you earlier comes in nice, that static strap, you can hook it up to another tree, maybe behind you or another vehicle behind you and use that equipment to hook up to an anchor point. And then same thing, have them in neutral, uh, have them have their foot on the brakes with the emergency brakes set. So that way you optimize your, uh, or basically just limit your potential of both vehicles sliding. That'll give you the best opportunity to get that stuck vehicle extracted from whatever spot it's in. So, and guys, like I said earlier, if you're self-extracting, obviously you wanna be in the driver's seat, keep yourself out of harm's way as much as possible. If you do need somebody else to want run the winch remote, you wanna make sure they're standing out of the way as far as possible. I mean, obviously nowadays with the new technology, with like the, capabilities that Warren offers with their Bluetooth controlled remote. You can stand really far out of the way and it's super safe. So that's pretty awesome. Um, as long as you're not out of range, obviously, but uh, for this, we're just gonna, for demonstration purposes, being in a showroom, uh, I'm just gonna stand here and run the winch, but don't forget first to engage your drum. Back into engage and we're just gonna winch in. Another thing, like I was saying earlier about how I melted the terminals off my battery, one thing I didn't realize at that time is that to prevent overheating of the solenoids, the motor in the winch, the battery, the wiring, any of those things is you do only want to run your winch for about 30 seconds at a time. Let it cool down for about another 30 seconds or so. What you don't want to do is a continuous run. It just puts way too much pressure on all of the components, the wiring, and chances are something's going to overheat, maybe even start on fire. So when you're pulling heavy, winch in, and this is sort of a judgment call. I don't think you want to go any longer than 30 seconds, especially if there's a lot of weight on there. Um, last fall when we got stuck up in upper Michigan, we had a lot of probably over max capacity winching on this rough country winch. Um, probably shouldn't tell you that, but that's okay. But anyways, I was winching for maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then I would give it a break, just let it cool off a little bit, winch again, another 10, 15 seconds. But that was when we knew there was a lot of pressure and a lot of stress on this particular winch. So 
Remember that when you're winching in, especially if there's a lot of load on the winch to only winch for short periods of time and then give it some cool off time, you know, about the same time that you were winching in for. So maybe 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. All right, so we've successfully extracted ourselves out of our situation or maybe somebody else out of their situation, but your winch cable or your synthetic rope is all full of crap, mud, debris, whatever it may be. At some point you are gonna wanna pull all of that winch cable back out or synthetic rope back out, um, clean it all up really nice, and then pre-tension your winch line. And what that pre-tension on your line will do is it'll just help keep your rope or, or metal cable just in better condition over the years that you have it. So there's a post-winching process, either off trail or what's probably best is when you get home, unspool your entire winch, not all the way. I mean, obviously leave a little bit on the drum, but spool it all back out. Make sure the cable or the synthetic rope is cleaned up really nice. If you have to, if it's synthetic cable or synthetic rope, uh, wash it in a bucket of water with some Dawn dish soap just to make sure you're taking care of that synthetic rope so you, you reduce the chances of that thing breaking on you the next time you go to use it. Um, so spool it back out or spool it all the way out, clean it up really nice, and then you wanna set tension on that cable or on that rope when you go to spool it back in. So when it's brand new, you wanna have about a thousand pounds of pulling pressure on that rope or cable when you're spooling in. Easiest way to do that is just to hook up to another vehicle, have a buddy help you out, have that vehicle in neutral, hook up to their bumper front and rear, doesn't matter, and just winch that vehicle towards you on a flat surface. And that should be enough pre-tension to put on that line or cable. So, um, and same thing, even if it is used, uh, even if it's, doesn't matter how many times you use it, you wanna always winch in with some tension on that cable. So that'll help keep your synthetic rope lasting a lot longer or your, I don't even know who uses cable anymore, but a lot of people still use the cable. It's obviously a lot more robust in certain situations. Anyways, you always wanna make sure to take care of your, your winch cable and your synthetic rope. Uh, synthetic rope, you should always have a cover on it as well to help keep the UV rays and any other debris, the weather, ice, whatever it may be from getting built up in there or obviously sun damage from the UV rays. So synthetic rope should always have some sort of cover on it when you're not using it. So other than that, guys, um, I think we covered just about everything that we wanted to cover in today's video to help give you guys more success when you're out winching. Maybe it's your first time, maybe you haven't done it in a while, but hopefully this video in one way or another has helped you guys out. And if you do have any other questions about winching, definitely make sure and let us know in the comments below. And guys, make sure and hit that subscribe button for when we do that winching techniques video, the more advanced teaching that we're gonna do on different winching techniques, double pulls, triple pulls, I don't know, we're gonna do a whole bunch of fun stuff. So that'll be pretty cool, so hit that subscribe button. Other than that, guys, remember that if you are looking for winches, make sure and check our accessories page on Trailbuilt Off-Road Plus. We'll have a link posted in the description below. As always, guys, we appreciate all of you for watching and all of your support. I'm Josh from Trailbuilt, and we'll see you guys out on the trails.